way, come. Heal. Okay. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another video. Way to bark right when I start talking, cowboy. Ready? Ugh. Today, we are going to be going over how to teach your dog the perfect and reliable recall. So, let's just dive right into it. I actually will not be using cowboy in today's video because I wouldn't be able to teach you guys anything um, because his recall is pretty darn solid. So, we're going to be going over to my girlfriend's house to use her Brittany bow and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I train Cowboy to have a pretty much perfect recall. So, let's do it. Whoa, that's a different dog. Okay guys, this is Bo. He is about a year and a half old Brittany bird dog. Um, he's a very different breed than a cattle dog. They are much more sensitive, um, pretty docile temperament. Um, just, a, just a sweet little dude. Uh, but as many bird dogs are, they like to dart off and get easily distracted by butterflies, literally anything that moves, a leaf blowing. Um, so that makes recall a little bit tougher, but we are going to be doing some long line work with him today and uh, show you guys how it goes. Okay, so it's really important before you guys start a training session to kind of let the dog just burn off any pent up energy. So we're just kind of walking around letting him get some of the smells out of the way so that when when I do ask him to come to me, he's not all wound up and we're setting him up for success. So, come on, Bob. Good boy. Come on, bird dog. It's pretty warm today, so I don't know how long we'll be out here. Good boy. But what you think? What you think? What you think? Good dog. That's a good animal. Okay guys, so we're down by this creek area. There's all kinds of birds and lizards and things to chase that are way more interesting than coming back to me. So I have a treat with me and also have Bo attached to the long line. And so what we're gonna do is have him kind of go out, wander, um, get distracted by things. And then when I call his name, I want him to look and come back to me. And if he doesn't come back to me, I'm going to start reeling him in and uh, give him a little tug on the leash. What I normally do is give him one little pop, see if they come back. If not, then you start to reel him in. So let's kind of see how it works here. I'll get a treat out. If you guys are familiar with short hairs or any of the continental breeds, you'll know that I mean, this is like, I don't know if you see him in the background, but he will literally just hunt all day in the yard and stuff. So they get very easily distracted. Bell, come. Good boy. Good boy. See? That boy. Good dog. Good dog. The praise and treats are going to be super important in the beginning here because um, you want them to come back to you. They, you want them to be excited to come back to you and, uh, so I'm gonna let him kind of go out again and hopefully you guys can kind of see, see him in action. Go find a bird, Bell. Bell, come. Come. Good boy. Six. Good dog. Good dog. That was great. He was chasing a flying bird and uh, if I didn't have the leash on him, he probably would have kept chasing that bird. But that correction, that pop brought him right back to me. So we have worked on this a few times with Bo, but a lot, lot less than Cowboy. He's a year behind him, um, progress wise. And the breed is just a lot harder to get to come to you than a cattle dog naturally. Their instincts are for you to go out and follow them. They're the ones that are go, supposed to, you know, go find the birds and stuff and you're supposed to catch up to them. So they don't want to catch up to you necessarily. So it's really important to have them always come back and check in on with you. Come on, go find a bird, buddy. Find a bird. Bo, come. Good boy. I didn't even tug at all on the leash. Sit. Good dog. That's a good dog. I didn't apply any pressure on the leash that time, so they pick it up really quick. He's a very eager to please, sensitive little guy. So uh, I'll show you guys. 
What do you think, Bo? What you think, mister? You're doing good. See if we can get a couple more good reps from him. Come on, Bo, find a bird. Bo, come. No. Come. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. See, we had to reel him back in that time. I think I was in the frame of the camera, but he went down to the creek and caught a new smell down in the water down there. And uh, first time I called him, didn't listen. So you give him a little correction, say no, and then if they don't come again, start reeling them in. And then as they start to trot towards you, you can say come again in these beginning stages and uh, just reinforce the behavior when they do get to you. Guys, this is just gonna take a lot of patience and a lot of practice, um, but I mean, it's definitely, definitely possible. I don't care what size dog you have, what age dog you have, what breed dog you have, gender, neutered, not neutered, doesn't matter. Um, this technique is really works with any of our dogs, all of our friends' dogs. Um, again, I am not a professional dog trainer or anything, um, so don't sue me, but I don't have anything to sue me for anyways, but uh, yeah. Loopy doopy. Come here, loopy doopy. Bo, come. Good boy. Good dog. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. You want to make sure you're able to get them close enough to grab them too and practice grabbing them, reaching down for them because you know you don't want a dog that comes to you and then uh, kind of gets close enough and then when you reach down to grab them they just dart off again. So you good boy, you're not a runner, are you? Bo, come. Good boy. Come. Good. Ah, ah. Come on, come on. Good. Sit. Good. That was good. We're going to end on that one. Okay, guys. Uh, that was kind of the premise of, of how I taught Cowboy a great recall. Um, like I said, kind of a recap. I guess first step, get out any pent up energy because um, you want them to be able to focus on you and you want to set them up for success and make sure they're in a good mood for training, basically. Um, step two, long line have them walking around. You can be somewhere with a decent amount of distractions. It's better to start with low distractions. Um, but we have done this a few times with Bo, so I was comfortable bringing him down to the creek um, with birds and stuff. But long line on them, call them back. They don't respond. Give them one little pop on the leash. They don't do that. Then you start reeling them in. And as soon as they start to trot towards you voluntarily, you can say come again and then reward them when they get to you. Um, so they might not come every time, but that's just part of the deal and you gotta just keep practicing. So, good, good boy. Also, if you guys wanted to kind of advance from a long line and you want your dog to maybe go out a little bit further or if you're on off leash hikes and stuff, an e-collar is really the next step up from that. Um, and I can make a whole nother video on an e-collar and there's all kinds of them out there on YouTube, but when used properly, uh, it allows your dog to have a lot more freedom to kind of go out. And it's the same idea, right? So they're out, they see something that distracts them, you call them, they don't listen, you give them just a little buzz. It could even just be a vibrate, not the shock. And uh, it snaps their attention away from that. And assuming you put in the foundation with the long line, they're gonna know that means come back to you. So, e-collars, next step. But practice with the long line for a while. I will say too, depending on the age of the dog, um, you don't want to do that for too long like any training session you know if you get three to five really good reps you might as well just call it um so you really want to end on a good one always try to and uh keep them short and sweet keep the dog interested and wanting to come back for more so thank you guys if you liked the video please hit a like and subscribe we'll be dropping a ton more new stuff you'll probably see bo on the channel again and uh we'll catch you in the next one